Hey there folks, welcome back to the Tower Tech. Today we're taking a look at memory, specifically how sensitive is the Zen architecture or the Ryzen platform from AMD actually to different types of memory. Let's get into it. So for those that have been researching around Ryzen, it's relatively well documented that there is a sensitivity about the type of memory that you can use. Uh, certainly the Samsung BDI chips certainly seem to pair more favorably with that platform, but just how much difference do the memory timings, both in terms of latency and raw speed, actually make to the Ryzen platform. For those that have been following the channel for a while will know I've been making use of this Corsair RGB kit. Now this is rated at 3000 megahertz, but I've never actually been able to get it above 2800 megahertz. Everything that I've done, BIOS upgrades, uh, memory timing, sub-memory timings, tweaking, 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 nothing that I've been able to do has been able to get this kit uh, running at the rated speed. And actually what I've learned is that the Corsair kit, um, when you get what you think is one model type, actually there are multiple uh, releases of that bit of kit. Um, there's actually a stamp on the back of this that actually tells you uh, what version type that is. And actually that, that can be made up of um, Samson memory modules or indeed um, uh, memory modules from many other common manufacturers. Um, so I've, I've swapped it out, I've bought myself some G-Skill uh, 3200 memory with very, very tight timings at 1414, 1434 at a 1T uh, command rate. If you don't understand what that means, and Google is your friend. And I set about benchmarking my Ryzen 1950X that has got the Asus Zenith Extreme motherboard in it, benchmark, uh, on exactly the same overclock. So there is an overclock on the Threadripper chip. It's running at four gigahertz and left all of the other settings the same as two GTX 1080s in there, both at stock speeds. Clearly they'll be boosting up and down. So all we've done is swap out this Corsair kit, which we had running at 2800 megahertz with the G-Skill running at 3200 megahertz with the timings that I described before. And test methodology was uh, a myriad of kind of uh, synthetic benchmarks uh, combined with real world performance. Synthetic benchmarks included Cinebench and Firestrike of the uh, kind of vanilla flavor, the extreme, the ultra, and then also a bit, bit of DX12 uh, DX12 testing in there as well with Time Spy, and then real world testing included an Adobe render, um, same, uh, the same project, the same timeline with both memory kits, and uh, of course, a bit of player unknowns uh, battleground performance. Whilst not optimized, a good indicator of overall system performance. And the hypothesis here, guys, is that we are going to see a performance improvement because of the the faster memory timings, the Infinity Fabric, which is the technology that stitches all of the cores together within uh, within the Ryzen platform, um, it has a direct correlation in terms of its performance with memory speed. Indeed, that setting within your motherboard uh, correlates to the performance of both of those things. So we removed the old memory being super, super, super careful because I, I didn't want to particularly drain my water cooling loop. Um, so we removed that really carefully and inserted the new G-Skill memory. And I have to say that G-Skill memory really does look the business. Uh, it's very smart looking, you know, instantly when I powered up the system, I could see that was quite attractive and dare I say, a little bit more attractive than the, uh, the Corsair memory. Um, and not only was the installation really straightforward, I mean, it's memory, how hard can it be? Um, but actually overclocking that and getting it straight to its, uh, its rated speed was an absolute breeze. I couldn't get this Corsair kit to do that. Nothing that I could do would get it to rate at, uh, get it to run at its rated timings, at its rated speed, straight out of the box, straight in there. The, uh, the G skill stuff was an absolute breeze to get up and running. And actually, um, uh, I had to reapply my overclock for the Threadripper. That was dead simple uh, and quick to do as well. Straight in at the same speed at the same voltage that I had previously. Um, 
As I said before, you know, the, the, the key to compatibility with the Ryzen platform is getting yourself some memory that is built on the Samsung B die. Um, it's quite difficult to know um, exactly whether, particularly with the Corsair kits, uh, whether that's actually running on the B-Die. A general rule of thumb here is that anything that's running at 3200 megahertz on a latency timing of C14, normally indicated in the description uh, of the memory that you're buying, it's very, very likely to be Samsung B-Die. It's very high performing. It's not for faint-hearted guys. These memory kits are pretty pricey. You know, I'm in the UK, so in UK pounds, about 400 pounds for this bit of kit. Um, rather the scary price of uh, about 500 pounds for the bit of kit that I've just put in there. But this is a 32 gig memory kit, which you don't need just for gaming. You know, it, this is particularly for content creators. So what do our tests tell us? Is the performance higher? Have we seen some gains? And is it worth you know, the extra research to make sure that you get the right sort of kit in your machine. So jumping in initially with the synthetics, the Cinebench score uh, with Threadripper at four gigahertz on the Corsair memory at 2800 megahertz came in at a very respectable 3228, no slouch at all. The same test actually on the same platform, same overclock with the new G-Skill memory jumped up to 3,387, so that's a 159 point increase. And consistently, we see the fire strike scores uh, continuing that trend. All of the scores were, across, uh, were up across the piece. I did find that that increase was proportionally smaller as the resolution stepped up. So moving from the standard Fire Strike to the Fire Strike Extreme to the Fire Strike Ultra, they were up across the board, but actually that increase was reduced as the resolution went up. And again, moving from DX11 to DX12 on the Time Spy synthetic benchmark, again, was up, but proportionally lower increase than we saw on uh, saw on the other tests. The real difference really started to come out with our real world testing, a Premiere Pro timeline, timed with the stopwatch, I might say, not using the computer to measure that. And from the point that we clicked start on the, the render to the point that the dialog, uh, the dialog window stopped displaying that it was rendering. Actually, uh, pretty respectable time pre uh, pre-memory swap out on a relatively complex 4K timeline that's uh, eight minutes and seven seconds long. That initially took 14 minutes, 49 seconds on the H.264 codec to render out. A pretty substantial reduction on the new memory kit down to 12 minutes, 35. That's well in excess of a two minute reduction. That's pretty material if you're working on big timelines. Uh, Player Unknown's Battleground, I have to say, was definitely improved, albeit slightly more muddled than the other results. No big surprise there. Player Unknown's Battleground is notoriously unoptimized, but we did see uh, average, minimum, and maximum frame rates all up. The 1% and 0.1% lows, slightly muddled. Um, that did seem to favor the Corsair memory, but actually when you look at the results, that looks like it's probably within uh, the margin of error. So. In conclusion, that's quite a nice wide range of tests, you know, covering synthetics and covering um, real world applications. I did do each of these tests three times, so we've taken the average of each, um, and that that's feels fairly robust. So, you know, conclusion here is Ryzen definitely favors memory that it has better compatibility support for, in particular, the Samsung B, uh, B die stuff, it really, really favors. Um, so make sure that you do your research before you buy. Slight faux pas on my part is, I bought that Corsair kit specifically for this Ryzen platform. It is on the qualified vendor list, so don't use that just as your, uh, your categoric check. Um, you do need to do uh, quite a wide uh, range of research to make sure you are getting the right kit. And actually, Ryzen as a platform is definitely more sensitive to memory latency and timings than we've seen on the Intel platform, which generally speaking, within a you know relatively close set of memory, you're like unlikely to really see uh, much difference. And do 
look through the costings. You know, I've got myself a, a Ryzen 1700 and I've got myself the Threadripper 1950X. They definitely constitute a great platform. Think very carefully about what you're doing. They're great for content creation. They're great for people who are running lots of virtual machines. Um, if you're just looking for gaming, what appears initially to be a lower purchase uh, with the better economics of the Ryzen platform, by the time you've thrown in super fast, super low latency memory, actually you might find that Delta's closed uh, if not, actually flip the other way. So there we go, guys. We have categorically proven that Ryzen favors particular types of memory. It definitely loves it being fast and low latency and pretty material improvements in performance, more so actually in the real world testing than the synthetics and of course, none of us are sitting there running synthetics all day. We're all doing real stuff with our PC. Please like and share this video. Uh, consider subscribing if you're not. I'm going to wrap this one up here. I hope you're really well wherever in the world you are, and I will see you in my next one.